Welcome and greetings. I'm Ian Gawler and I'm one of those fortunate people to have recovered from a really difficult illness. Diagnosed with widespread secondary bone cancer in 1976 and having been expected to live for only a few weeks, it's wonderful to have recovered and to be able to share with you what has been at the heart of my own healing and what many others have learnt and applied in their own healing journeys. When we have the need for healing, it makes sense to seek out the best of what can be done for us by others. Doctors, natural therapists, complementary practitioners, and those who love and care for us. But then to reinforce all that with what we can do for ourselves. And this is what this app offers, the best mind-body techniques that you can use to complement whatever else you may be doing. Not only have these techniques been well studied and researched, but they've been really well tested. Tested in my own recovery, tested by thousands of people who've used them over the last four decades. They're easily learnt and reasonably easy to practice. It just takes a little perseverance. And my wish is you find them as transforming as so many other people before you have. So, Perhaps a little history. I started my working life as a veterinary surgeon. However, my life changed completely way back in 1975 when I was first diagnosed with cancer. My right leg was amputated, but the cancer actually reoccurred less than a year later, leading to that very short prognosis. Faced with my own tough situation, and no curative medical treatment in sight, I speculated that maybe there could be a way to enhance my own natural healing potential and somehow find a way to survive. Now, fortunately, this was all in the early days where nutrition was being used therapeutically, when discoveries were coming to light around the power of the mind, and the healing potentials of meditation and guided imagery were just starting to be realised. So I tried it all. And not surprisingly, I found some things useless and others really helpful. What I soon came to realise was the key role the mind played in healing. Becoming more self-aware, I realised how stress had played a role in the lead up to my illness. How stressful the diagnosis of a major illness itself could be and how releasing stress not only felt marvellous, but helped the body to heal more naturally. So after an intense few years, I was back working as a veterinarian and found people wanted to know what had helped me to recover. This had led on to me starting one of the world's first lifestyle-based self-help groups in 1981. Lifestyle, because we taught how to gain therapeutic benefit from things like nutrition, exercise, social support, and of course, our minds. Now, of course, not everyone is interested in such things. I did see some people who seemed resigned to their diagnosis and sadly become overwhelmed by their prognosis. The thought of all the changes and adjustments difficult health can bring along with concerns about the possibility of an early death, seemed just too much for them. Or maybe they simply did not want to change their lifestyle, fair enough. On the other hand, many were inspired to realise that they could play a more active role in their own recovery, and that there were real prospects of improving their own situation. So many of these people became really committed and did all in their power to turn around their adversity. And happily, I can tell you, I've seen many people with wonderful stories to tell. And of course, modern research tells us that all the chronic degenerative diseases are preventable. But it may be even better news to know that the research is also clear these days. Lifestyle medicine can have powerful curative effects and at the heart of all this is our mind. For even in the most obvious way, 
It is our mind that decides what we do. Our mind decides what treatments we choose, how thoroughly we follow them through. Our mind decides what we eat and drink and how much, whether we learn to relax or not, how much we meditate. Our mind decides all this. And obviously, if our mind is confused or overwhelmed with emotion, it's very difficult to think clearly. So what many people who meditate tell me is that the meditation helps to clear their mind. And as a result, it's easier to sort out the complex issues that inevitably accompany chronic illness. And as a consequence, they make better choices, better decisions. So there's great potential in all this. I've been involved in the writing of several books documenting the cases of people who've recovered against the odds from difficult cancers like myself. I've been involved in research that showed that people with multiple sclerosis who attended lifestyle programs we presented, rather than deteriorating further, actually did turn that illness around. Over a five year period, the research showed they managed to improve all their significant MS markers by an average of about 10%. So while chronic degenerative diseases are on the rise across our community, the great news is that there is a great deal we can do to alleviate all this. And the wish is that you'll be able to access these techniques, learn and apply them, and that you too will experience similar benefits to so many before you. Now, maybe you have done some meditation-based exercises like this before. Maybe they're all new to you. Either way, you'll find them easy to follow. The main principle is that by relaxing in body and mind, we let go of the immediate effects of stress and settle into a deeper, more natural, balanced state. While resting in this state, our body has the chance to balance its hormones and internal chemistry. Once balanced like this, the body is then exquisitely equipped to heal itself. And in a strange sort of way, this is a bit like rebooting a computer. We shut down as it were, everything recalibrates, and then our natural capacity for self-healing re-engages. Simple, really. So our main healing practice combines physical relaxation and mindfulness as a way of leading gently into this style of stillness meditation. This is the practice we recommend you use regularly. For chronic illness, 10 to 20 minutes once or twice a day seems to work well. For more major or more acute illness, experience says three times a day with longer sessions of 40 to 60 minutes each. Also available is the white light guided imagery exercise. Many have found this exercise pivotal in their healing. So you could alternate this with the meditation track. Best to experiment and trust what feels right for you in all this. So for now, best to choose a quiet place to begin, settle a little, decide whether to sit or if you need to lie down, Go to the app, select your preferred track with my own voice or that of my wife, Dr. Ruth Gawler, who's a medical practitioner with a great deal of experience in this field, and begin. <laughs> 